Hi, and welcome back to the Law School. I'm Marcia Fersger Nagorski, class of 1995 and the Associate Dean for Communications at the Law School. I've been giving tours of my beloved law school for almost 30 years, and I'm looking forward to showing you how the law school building looks today. The building, designed by Ira Saarinen, opened on October 1st, 1959, so most of you took classes here. We've been through several major renovations since then, and I'll be talking about those changes. And as you might imagine, the building has looked very different over the past year as we have worked hard to safely have students and faculty in the building for hybrid learning during COVID-19. I'll be pointing out some of those modifications as well. Let's get started. Welcome back to the Green Lounge. This is a space familiar to anyone who's ever been in our building. The Green Lounge is the social center of the law school, home to our tiny law school cafe, ordinarily our foosball table and our industrial microwaves, and Academia, a sculpture that was part of Chicago's Cows on Parade in 1999 and has been here ever since. The Green Lounge was designed to counteract the common feature of Gothic school design that had multiple small gathering spaces throughout the building. Our faculty believed that this caused people to separate themselves into cliques, and they wanted a space where everyone, students and faculty, would have to run into each other all the time. The Green Lounge has had a variety of decorations over the years, including drab paintings the same color as the walls. The massive paintings in the Green Lounge today were commissioned in 1994 by then-Dean Douglas Baird to brighten up the large space. The artist, Judy Ledgerwood, spent several months in the Green Lounge studying the light before starting work. One notable feature of the Green Lounge is the large glass panel wall bisecting it into the north and south Green Lounges. This divider marks the spot where the original building was expanded in the late 1980s, almost doubling in size not only the Green Lounge, but all five library floors above it. This renovation was then called squaring the rectangle. On the upper floors, you can still see the seam in the floor from this renovation. The Green Lounge has certainly changed its look and feel over the years, usually with its furniture, moving from large leather banquettes to pink soft seating to the normal combination of black, white, and gray mid-century modern furniture we usually have in place today. The Green Lounge continues to be a vibrant part of the law school on a day-to-day -day basis, as well as hosting special occasions like the Entering and Graduating Students Dinner, the Parsons Dinner, and the Chicago Law Foundation Auction. During COVID-19, we've removed all of the regular furniture and created these individual seating options so that students can eat in here safely and be unmasked. It's still a lively space, however, with students participating virtually in lunchtime events with speakers on Zoom and having cross-table conversations. Here we are in the Arthur Kane Center for Clinical Legal Education. The Mandel Legal Aid Clinic itself opened on October 1st, 1957, two years before the main law school building. For 40 years, the clinics, even as they grew, occupied small offices in the basement of the building. As nostalgic as some alumni get about offices where you have to sidle around the partially open door to enter the room, our esteemed clinics needed new space. In 1998, the Kane Center became a new addition between the former east entrance of the law school and University Avenue. The Kane Center now houses 13 clinics, only some of which are under the Mandel umbrella. Each of the 16 faculty members plus several fellows has an office in this space surrounding this beautiful atrium. The clinic also contains file space, office areas for staff, and two large sunny conference rooms. The atrium is often the site of events for clinic clients and students.
This is classroom two, the largest classroom at the law school. Until the classroom wing renovation in 2004, this room seated over 135 people. Now it seats 118. The old classrooms had slightly curved tables, creating difficult acoustics that prevented students from hearing one another. In addition, the classrooms were not accessible to people who use wheelchairs due to the steps leading to all the seats. In 2004, we renovated all the classrooms to increase the curvature of the rows, add acoustic tiling, and add a ramp at the front of the room and seating for people who use wheelchairs. As a result of the decreased capacity in all our classrooms, 1L classrooms are no longer held in rooms 1 and 4, but instead in rooms 2 and 3, so this room feels very familiar to students these days. During COVID, these large rooms are used for all hybrid learning. We can safely have 34 students in room 2, and stickers on the desk tell students where they should sit for proper distancing. Students keep their laptops open and are logged into Zoom so that their computer microphones will allow the Zoomers to hear what the rumors are saying in class. And new audio and video technology in the room allows the rumors to hear the Zoomers and allows faculty to connect with students both in person and remotely. Because we don't have enough large rooms to accommodate all in-person teaching during this time, we are also currently using space at the beautiful new Rubenstein Forum at Woodlawn and 60th Street, where students clean their desk before class and use handheld microphones to be heard by those attending virtually, but are otherwise using a similar system. While we're proud of how well everyone has adjusted during COVID, we can't wait to have all our students and faculty back together in the classroom again. In addition to adding the Kane Center in 1998, we also added four classrooms to the southern edge of the law school, two on the main level and two on the lower level. Prior to 1998, if you had walked east from the Green Lounge towards the classrooms, ahead of you would be the exit to the outside, where the Kane Center is today, and to your right would have been a limestone wall. Many students from that era remember visiting this space when grades were posted when they were available to be picked up from the registrar. We knocked down the wall over here in 1998, and we added classrooms five and six upstairs and F and G downstairs. The space outside classrooms five and six is often used for small events, and we have photos of some historic firsts from our community hanging here. Sophonisba Breckenridge, our first woman graduate, who was in our first graduating class in 1904. Nelson Willis, class of 1918, our first African-American graduate. Earl Dickerson, class of 1920, our first African-American JD graduate. Interestingly, Willis and Dickerson both started together in 1915, but Dickerson took some time away to serve in World War I and ended up graduating later. In addition, we have Jules Stratford LaFontante, class of 1946, our first female African-American graduate, and her former husband, John Rogers, class of 1948. The newly added 1998 classrooms look quite a bit different than the other ones. One major reason to add them was to increase the range of options for room sizes. Until this point, the only options for larger lecture rooms were ones that seated at least 95, or smaller seminar rooms seating between 14 and 35. Classrooms F and G on the lower level added two much needed seminar rooms, seating about 50 and 25. Classroom 6 on the main level is a conference style space, seating 16 and in constant use for meetings. And classroom 5, where we are now, seats 70 people, a size much needed for the kinds of classes we teach today. This room is and has been a favorite of many faculty members, including former senior lecturer Barack Obama, for its excellent acoustics and the fact that it is our only larger room with windows. Room 5 has also been put to use during COVID-19, as you can see from the configuration. The 
lower level of the classroom wing changed quite a lot during the 2004 classroom wing renovations. Prior to 2004, if you wanted to get to a seminar room, you had to go down the specific staircase that led to that room. You could only get from one seminar room to another, either by going up or down a staircase, around to the correct staircase for the room, and then back up or down again. This made those spaces entirely inaccessible to people who use wheelchairs or had other mobility concerns, and secondarily, left the spaces dark and poorly used. We opened up the walls, blocking the seminar rooms from each other, creating a concourse with ramps at either end, and allowing for full accessibility from either direction. This also allowed more light from the huge windows in the main classroom hallway to come down to the seminar room level, and added seating along the concourse level. This created a comfortable area to wait for classes to begin, as well as a place to put out food for smaller lunchtime talks. As part of the renovation, we also made the lower level more attractive and functional by swapping out the old green metal lockers for these more functional and attractive wooden lockers, and added comfortable and bright mid-century seating. Unfortunately, we cannot currently use this space the way we would like, but look forward to returning to it post-COVID. As we move through these hallways, we can see some of the law school's history on our walls. We have copies of the composite photos taken of each graduating class hanging here, at least the years such photos were taken. More than 70 classes are represented on these walls, including our very first class of 1904, whose photo hangs in the alcove leading to the dean's office, alongside the most recent graduating class. When we open back up again, we hope you'll come back and take a look at these and other photo galleries around the law school. During the 2008 renovation of the library tower, we took the opportunity to make certain spaces more useful and logical. Our three student journals each used to have small, cramped offices in different parts of the library tower. They were full of old furniture, highly inaccessible, and difficult to work in, though often much loved by their staffs. The creation of a student services suite on the third floor of the library left the old career services space available, and so we turned it into an office for all the student journals. They now share this comfortable space, which includes desk space for each of the journals, dedicated printers, a lovely kitchen space, an office for the staff member who works with the journals, and a conference room. The Law Review, Legal Forum, and Chicago Journal of International Law have not only a nice workspace here, but have many more opportunities for collaboration with each other. The D'Angelo Law Library sits directly on top of the Green Lounge. The second and third floors contain the Reading Room, the Faculty Workshop, the Student Services Suite, and the Fulton Room, as well as some of the most popular student study space by the North Windows. The fourth, fifth, and sixth floors contain the vast majority of the library's book collection, the faculty offices, and additional student study space, as well as a media room for student use, and the rare book collection. In 2008, the library tower was extensively renovated. The book stacks got new facing with sound dampening tiles, faculty offices got new doors that let more light into the center of the building, and student study space was updated and reconfigured to account for the way students study today. But the biggest changes took place in this area right here, the reading room. The reading room has had several iterations of furniture, from the small work tables of the 1960s to the three huge communal tables of the 1980s and 1990s. The tables you see here now are designed for communal work and for laptops. The catwalk looking down from the third floor has always been there, but the renovations added this grand staircase, which leads directly to the new student services suite on the third floor, which we'll get to shortly. Over a period of time, the library service space has changed a great deal, from the time when card catalogs dominated the south wall to when the west portion of the room was taken up with a big computer lab. 
The 2008 renovations completed the view you see today, with the reference and circulation functions all operating out of one desk and the additions of conference space and soft seating throughout. Our librarians monitor the library up to five times a day in order to best understand how students are using the space so that we can always be meeting their study and research needs. During COVID, less has changed in the reading room than in other spaces, but there have been changes. All tables are now used by one person at a time, and study spaces are reserved to ensure we don't exceed occupancy limits. Students help out by wiping down their spaces before and after they use them. During the renovation of the library tower in 2008, we took the opportunity to move all of our student services teams into a single suite. This was great for the administrators, who could collaborate much more easily, and great for the students, who no longer had to go to offices all over the building to get things taken care of. The entire south half of the third floor, which once housed the library's microfiche collection and machines, and later student study space and the third floor computer lab, was turned into the student services suite. This space now houses the offices of admissions, financial aid, the dean of students, the registrar, and career services. Students have a one-stop shop for taking care of their administrative needs, and our administration can more easily share information and work together on student concerns. During COVID, most of our administrators and staff are working fully remotely, and our teams have pivoted to run nearly everything on Zoom, from admitted students weekend, to coffee mess, to on-campus interviewing. And so we come to perhaps the most iconic view of the law school, from the middle of the Laird Bell Law Quadrangle. From the front, the exterior of our building looks exactly as it did in 1959. From here, you can't see the southern addition to the library, nor the Kane Center and the classrooms added in 1998. However, much has changed around our historic building. South Campus has grown considerably, and there are new dorms to both the east and the west of the law school, and a new dining hall our students take advantage of. On the west part of the quad, in front of Burton Judson, which now houses only undergraduates, we have a lovely new garden that is part of a campus-wide project funded by the descendants of our longest-serving dean, James Parker Hall. And the biggest change of all is the change to our beloved fountain. Most Erosarinen buildings have reflective features, and this is ours. The old fountain, you may remember, was a regular fountain, about 18 inches deep, with 11 water jets in the southeast corner. We would freeze it in the winter and skate on it, and students would often take dips in it in the warmer weather, and especially at graduation. But nearly 50 years of freezing and thawing pipes took its toll, and it became more and more difficult to get the fountain into working order each spring. So our fountain became a zero-depth fountain. Each of the 1,447 black tiles in the fountain sits on its own footing so it can be individually leveled to make a perfect surface. When the fountain is full, about a quarter inch of water is pushed up from between the tiles, flows across, and re-enters the pool below where the dark tile meets the light tile at the edge. Now renamed the Levin Reflecting Pool, this version of the fountain can be full of water for more of the year and attract students, faculty, and children from the neighborhood to cool their feet in it or try to throw a frisbee through the hole in the Pevsner sculpture. And when winter comes, it becomes the granite plaza you see right now. So much is different, but so much is the same. As we often say, it's the same law school you remember, just a bit better. Thank you for joining me today to take a walk through our law school. I hope you've enjoyed seeing the changes and adaptations we have made, and that you saw both some spaces that made you feel nostalgic and some that showed you something new. If you have any questions, feel free to email me at the law school, and I hope we'll all be able to be together for an in-person tour sometime soon. Have a great reunion.